Do you ever do this, Glasgow? Do you ever get asked to do the washing up and you do it really badly on purpose so you never get asked again? Do you do that? Yeah. My girlfriend does that with blowjobs. <laughs> Seriously, her blowjobs suck. <laughs> and it's not just me, a lot of my friends have commented. <laughs> my girlfriend likes to have the lights on during sex. Yeah, because she likes to be able to read. <laughs> Which I think is to be encouraged in a girl of her age. <laughs> I'm kidding! <laughs> She's actually scared of the duck. <laughs> that divides people, though, doesn't it? Some people like the lights on, some people always have to have the lights off. I like the lights on during sex. My best mate likes to have the lights off. And fair enough, his missus is a pig. <laughs> My girlfriend and I, we do a little bit of role play in the bedroom. I pretend to be a swarthy Italian Lothario, and she pretends to be asleep. <laughs> she gets pretty into it as well. Sometimes she's there for seven or eight hours. <laughs> I do talk about sex a lot in my show. I talk about sex all the time on stage. And a friend called me on it recently. Came to see the gig, and he, he went, you talk about sex all the time. Are you obsessed? I said, well, I'm not obsessed. But sex is the great universal topic for comedy. It's still quite taboo to talk about it openly in public. Everyone's interested, everyone cranes forward, and there's a lot of tension around sex. And where you find that kind of tension, that's also a great place to find laughter. So sex is a great topic for comedy. But it's difficult to stand in front of you good people and talk about sex without sounding crude. So to try and mitigate that, to try and alleviate that, this evening, if I refer to a vagina at any point, I'll be calling it a twinkle cave. <laughs> As in, so there I was, licking out a twinkle cave. <laughs> while she deep-throated my tummy banana. <laughs> my girlfriend always says, you never tell me how much you love me. I don't want to upset her. <laughs> A couple of weeks ago, we were making love and she had, well, she had an asthma attack. I did briefly think I was doing really rather well. <laughs> then about sort of the 90-second, two-minute mark, I thought, hang on, she's laying this on a bit thick. <laughs> Either she wants something or she's not well. <laughs> and she wasn't well. I totally panicked. I didn't know what to do. So I phoned a friend of mine who's a doctor and he lives just down the road from me. And I said to him, you know, what should I do? He said, well, yeah, don't panic. It could be quite serious. It probably isn't, but I'll pop right over. I said, what should I do in the meantime? He said, finish yourself off. <laughs> it's very difficult to get dirty talk right. Have you noticed this? It's very difficult to get dirty talk right. Like in a long-term relationship, it's fine. Because you know where your boundaries are, you know your partner. But on a one-night stand, fraught with danger. I've got a story concerning a friend of mine. He's quite good at pulling. We were all at a party together, and he pulled a girl that none of us knew. Ended up back at her place that night having sex. Well done him. High five. <laughs> so he told us the story the next day. He said she started it. They were, they were having sex. She said, talk dirty to me. Or more accurately, talk dirty to me. <laughs> so from the roller decks of filth in his head, he came forth with this. And this would be fine for many of the ladies here. Within the confines of the bedroom, Within the boudoir, this would be an okay thing to say, with a long-term, loving, trusting partner. On a one-night stand, maybe not. He said, You love it, you slut! <laughs> she said, I'm not a slut! <laughs> and there was a very awkward moment. Awkward as moments can be, when you've just insulted someone your balls deep in. <laughs> he apologised profusely, needless to say, and they moved on. I imagine there's a story there, mate. <laughs> now, I don't know if anyone's seen any of the other TV shows that I made. I make a show called Distraction at the moment. Has anyone seen that? Yeah. Oh, just about everyone. And one person liked it. <laughs> well, that's good if I can entertain just one man. I'll have been shit. <laughs> the distractions are quite good. It's, it's Channel 4's replacement to Sex in the City. <laughs> just imagine the city is Dundee and the sex is anal. You get the idea. <laughs> well, let's talk about love and romance and sex. Let's talk about sex. Glasgow, there's a very commonly held belief that men think about sex every seven seconds, which I think makes talking to your dad creepy. <laughs> British men spend on average 22 minutes on foreplay. Of course, that is spread out between all of us over the course of a year. <laughs> Women who read romance novels have twice as much sex as the national average. While I say sex, what I mean is they yield the precious softness of their silken female innocence <laughs> to the crushing firmness of his intent. <laughs> Sorry, I came over all Catherine Cooks in there. <laughs> it's not a great phrase to use. 
That'd be like painting the fourth bridge. <laughs> the average person has two pounds of meat lodged in their colon. So come on, love. <laughs> I, I read a thing, it said that 98% of men are happy to have sex on a first date. I thought, well, happy? We're high-fiving strangers on a night bus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey! Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <clears throat> of course, a lot of women don't want to have sex on a first date, even if they want to have sex on a first date, because they think if they have sex on a first date, it makes them a slag or a slut or something. Well, not anymore, ladies. You're going to have to do more than that to be a slag these days. Am I right, Tracy? <laughs> I'm just saying that like, having sex on a first date just means you wanted to have sex on a first date. That's all it means. To be a slag these days, you're going to have to do so much more. I've got friends that are slags. My friend Louise is a slag. She's got five kids <laughs> by seven different dads. <laughs> I'd like to talk about a sex act that I don't fully understand. Are you all familiar with the 69, yes? <laughs> no, I like the 69 as much as the next man. <laughs> Hoping he is a man, that would be terrible. <laughs> I like the 69, but I don't, I don't really understand it because it's an incredibly intimate thing to do with another human being. But how does the 69 ever occur? It only ever happens when, when the, the man says to the woman, would you do that thing that I like? And the woman goes, yeah, all right, but only if you do that thing that I like. And the man goes, not a problem, away you go. And the woman says, no, because the last time I did the thing that you liked, you were a little bit sleepy afterwards. You fucked off to sleep. You said, we'll call it a 68. It's like a 69, but I owe you one. <laughs> I like everything about the 69, apart from the view. <laughs> Let's talk about gifts, because gifts are very important when you're in a relationship. They show your partner how you feel about them. This is interesting. My girlfriend suggested last Christmas that we limit ourselves to £20 for each other's presents. But I wasn't thinking about spending that kind of money. <laughs> Obviously, if you're buying gifts for a woman, it's pretty easy. You just go for the classics. You know, champagne, chocolates, flowers. Unless you're dating an alcoholic bulimic with hay fever. <laughs> I buy my girlfriend flowers every week because I really fancy the girl in the florist. <laughs> I've told the girl in the florist my girlfriend's dead. <laughs> I thought it was a good idea at the time. It slightly backfired. You try explaining to your other half why you got her a wreath four weeks in a row. <laughs> Obviously, different flowers express different emotions. So, for example, red flowers say passion. Yellow flowers say love, and self-raising flower says, make me a cake. <laughs> My girlfriend said recently, she said, we need some romance in our lives, so I took the hint, I booked a hotel, flowers, chocolate, champagne, petals on the bed, the full bit, ended up having incredible sex. Of course, it turned out she wanted me to take her. <laughs> What's the fucking point of that? I live with her. <laughs> She'll be there when I get back. <laughs> Put the kettle on, love and fucking knackered. <laughs> I'm not saying I feel cheated, but when we got together, she said to me, she said, I'm very liberal about sex. I don't care what people do, as long as they're consenting adults and no one gets hurt. There's always a catch, isn't there? <laughs> no one gets hurt. Consenting. <laughs> adults. <laughs> Basically, no fun. <laughs> any gag hags, any chuckle fuckers? <laughs> the only reason I ask is, if any girls come up to me after the show looking for sex, I'm going to have to disappoint you. I mean, we can have sex. <laughs> Just it will be quite disappointing. <laughs> I wouldn't lie to you, it'd be like throwing a sausage up an alleyway. <laughs> More information than some of you wanted, OK. My girlfriend asked me recently one of, the, one of the big questions in life. She said to me, do you want to have children? I thought about it, I thought, God, is there any truer expression of the love that you have for another person than to have a child with them? Because really, that is a bond that lasts forever. It's not like getting married, marriages break up, but having a child together, you know you're going to be bonded through that child for the rest of your life. And then I thought about the money. I thought, well, how expensive is it bringing up a child? It's apparently the most expensive thing you can do. It costs £100,000 to bring up a child up to the age of 18. It's an incredible amount of money. It's not like buying a house where you can sell it on. <laughs> it doesn't appreciate. That's just gone. <laughs> and then I thought about the education of the child. Would I send it to state school or private school? I'm doing all right. I might think about private school, but I'd probably end up sending it to state school. And then, you know, maybe I'd compromise on that, become a bit of a hypocrite, end up reading the Daily Mail, going to parent-teacher meetings. <laughs> becoming my dad. It'd be awful. And then I thought, I thought more about, well, why am I thinking about having a child? Why don't I think about adopting a child? Isn't it just about the family unit and love rather than just having a little mini-me running around the place? And then, then I thought about how much it would mean to, to have my family name live on. 
and you know what that would mean to my, my nearest and dearest. And then, then I thought again about the relationship with my girlfriend, how that would change, how I'd probably end up calling her mum or something, you know, be, would really sort of change that. And then you know, it would change my life and probably ruin it. Uh, anyway, I sort of weighed up all the pros and all the cons, and, and in the end I said no. <laughs> of course, by then I'd come. <laughs> Luckily, all over her tits. A lot of people like to smoke cigarettes after sex, but you can't buy cigarettes until you're 16, so I have to get them for both of us. <laughs> you think it's wrong I'm buying a 15-year-old girl cigarettes? You think it's wrong I'm fucking her? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> kidding does sound like a verb for child abuse, doesn't it? I'm kidding. Are you joking or touching kids? <laughs> I woke up with an erection this morning. On reflection, I wish it had been my own. <laughs> <laughs> Saw a headline in the paper. It said, homeless shelter burns down. I thought, well, what are they now? <laughs> homeless, sir? <laughs> no, they were trapped inside. They're all dead. If you know the difference between a kayak and a canoe, you probably don't know what it's like to have sex. <laughs> Having sex with someone at work is all right, as long as you don't work in a primary school. <laughs> I've got a friend who's a part-time teacher. Well, they're all part-time. <laughs> what, the worst one that I think a lot of people have done, Secret Santa. Do you do Secret Santa at your work? It's a nightmare, isn't it, to get something good for under a five, under a ten? I went out and bought a brawn moustache trimmer. She was livid. <laughs> no pleasing some people. Not like she didn't need it. Um, the, uh, the, the best gift is obviously uh, anal sex. Um, <laughs> not for a secret Santa thing. That's a fucking disaster. <laughs> but no, it is. It's, it's better to give than to receive. And anal sex is the gift that keeps on giving, unless it stops giving, in which case it tears. Being working class is very much like masturbation. It's nothing to be ashamed of. <laughs> of course, it's nothing to be proud of either. <laughs> and both give you calluses on your hands. <laughs> Sting, the popular singer, Sting's often bragging about his eight-hour night sex sessions with his wife, Trudy. Imagine how long he'd be able to keep it up if she was a looker. <laughs> Here's an interesting thing. This is weird. You can have sex in this country when you're 16, but you can't buy pornography until you're 18. That's an odd law, isn't it? So you can have sex when you're 16, but you're not allowed to watch other people have sex for another two years. So if you're 16, you can have sex, just don't look down. <laughs> My girlfriend said to me, during sex, she said, did you remember to lock the front door? I said, yeah, there's no way you're going to escape. <laughs> they say don't masturbate, you'll go blind. Yeah, only if you get it in your eyes. <laughs> Aim away. Who do you think about when you masturbate? <laughs> Her. So do I, she's lovely. <laughs> that was a good answer. You think about your partner when you masturbate. I think I'll put my hand on my heart, speak on behalf of every man in here and say, when we masturbate, we think about you ladies. We think about our partners, our wives and our girlfriends. Yeah. We think, <laughs> we do. I do, I always think of my girlfriend. I think, Ocean's walk in. <laughs> she doesn't even know I've got these magazines. Have you ever had this? My girlfriend made me fire our cleaner because she said the cleaner was too good looking and she didn't want her in the house. How mental is that? She was a really good cleaner. She was especially good at getting spunk out of hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other ultimate sexual fantasies? My girlfriend. My girlfriend. <laughs> well, maybe we could double team her. <laughs> my girlfriend is your ultimate sexual fantasy. <laughs> yes, people see my girlfriend and they see me and they say, she's only going out with you because you're famous. And I say, but I am famous. <laughs> What's your point? <laughs> is, is that your girlfriend? That is my girlfriend. That's your girlfriend? <laughs> I'm not going to swap if that's OK. <laughs> I've actually got a bit of a soft spot for teachers. I used to go out with a teacher and she was lovely. But if ever I wanted sex, she always insisted to put my hand up first. <laughs> <laughs> I 
that is ruder than it first appears. <laughs> Wondering, does anyone have this arrangement in their relationship? It's becoming ever more common now for couples to have an arrangement whereby they're totally faithful to each other, but they've got a clause whereby if one of them was to meet a certain celebrity, they would be allowed to stray. <laughs> Has anyone got that going on in their relationship? Who have you got? You. <laughs> right. I notice that you're sitting next to a lady. <laughs> you're going to do what when you go home? She's going to kill you? Yeah. Right. Or strap one on and fuck you, certainly. <laughs> I don't think speed cameras are fair. Who's with me? Yeah. I can't see how they're fair. If I'm driving home from this gig at 12 midnight, yeah, and there's kids playing in the street, they've got bigger problems than me. <laughs> well, not anymore, they haven't, but... <laughs> but let's say I'm driving home from this gig, 12 midnight, let's say I'm doing 40 in a 30 zone, I get flashed by one of those cameras. How is it fair that my girlfriend gets three points on her licence? <laughs> that doesn't seem fair to me. She's already got 12 points. <laughs> She's going to have to go to jail. <laughs> Are you all aware of what snowballing is, the sexual practice snowballing? Yeah. One bloke down. <laughs> Who was that down there? Quite proud of that. Well done. <laughs> Everyone else, none the way. OK, well, I'll explain. It says something about you. <laughs> Snowballing is a sexual practice where having administered oral sex, your partner doesn't spit or swallow so much as return to sender via a kiss. <laughs> oh, you're looking shocked and appalled as I explain that to you. Let me assure you, I found out the hard way. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jimmy Carr and uh, I'm announcing a new tour. It's called Jimmy Carr Laughs Funny because, you know, I do. I go to jimmycarr.com for dates and tickets and then, uh, you know, I guess buy a ticket and come and see the tour. I laugh funny, so can you. Come and see me.